The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 21st chapter. Jesus said, There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on the earth distress among nations confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now, when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads because your redemption is drawing near. Then he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is already near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life. And that day does not catch you unexpectedly like a trap. For it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. Be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. This is the good news of Jesus Christ. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts Be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Well, if ever there was a reading to make us want to take stock of our life, today's reading is probably it. Christ is coming. Are we ready? (laughs) Are we ready to meet Jesus face to face? If you answered yes, then you're smiling. If you answered, well, maybe not quite yet, then you might be thinking about areas of your life that could use a little makeover. And that is exactly the opportunity that Advent gives us. Advent is a time of waiting with eager expectation for the Messiah to come, a time to prepare. Every year we hear this message or a message similar to it and it always seems like this is going to be some distant time. But what if it's today? This very day. When we hear readings about the second coming it feels far off like a big global universal event. Oh, climate change. Oh, pandemic. But what if it's more personal? What if Jesus returns to each of us individually? Like when we see someone in need, do we walk past or do we help? Was that Jesus by the side of the road with a sign asking for spare change? Was that you, Lord? In today's reading, we hear all about all sorts of disasters and astrological signs. There will be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars and on the earth distress among nations confused by the roaring of the seas and the waves. You know, we've seen many natural disasters lately. Is this it? Hundreds of turtles were washed up on a beach in Florida. Where have the monarch butterflies gone? Bees are dying by the millions. It does sound like climate change and the atmospheric rivers that are sending rivers of water through the atmosphere causing flooding in British Columbia and other places. And what about those devastating wildfires? What do you think? Are these the signs we're watching for? Some of these are just the way things always happen on an ongoing basis. Earthquakes, floods, volcanoes, fires, they happen forever and always. But bees dying by the millions? 
Without the bees, how will the crops be pollinated? Be on your guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of life. When I read this passage the first time through, I kind of skipped over dissipation. And I thought, what does that mean anyway? What does dissipation mean? Dissipation is defined as the act of scattering around or being wasteful. The squandering of money or energy or resources. Maybe squandering the family's fortune. The loss of energy from a physical system, most often in the form of heat. Kind of sounds like global warming. Maybe Jesus is saying, don't squander the energy of your life, your God-given life. Is this the same? This is not the same as honoring the Sabbath. You know, six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work on that day. God ordained the Sabbath for us as a gift. It's a day of rest. But dissipation is different. It is the squandering of the hours of your life, the energy of your life. There are many ways that invite us to dissipate our lives. For me, I think social media finds its way into my dissipation, I guess. But we all have pet ways, right, to squander our lives. Think about it. What way do you squander the hours of your life? When we see the signs, what to watch for that tell us Jesus is coming, it all sounds a little scary. And our natural reaction might be fear. Have you ever been afraid? I mean, really afraid? Fear is a powerful force. Sometimes when I'm afraid, I try to be very quiet and listen. I pull myself in trying to make myself smaller, almost trying to become invisible. Fear can make us act in ways that are against everything that we know is good. To be afraid is against the very nature of God. There is no fear in love. But perfect love drives out fear. God is love, and love drives out fear. Maybe that is why we're reminded, do not fear, over and over again throughout the Bible. Over 120 times, the Bible tells us, do not fear or do not be afraid. Most of us need to hear it. And we need to heed it, too. Fear turns people we don't even know into enemies. And the need for all the weapons in the gated communi communities, think about all the resources that are dissipated because we are afraid. I can't even imagine how many resources are wasted on fear. At the beginning of the pandemic, we may remember that that uh, some of us were hoarding things because we were afraid there would not be enough. There would not be enough for us and our neighbor. Our fear may make us look out for ourselves and not care for the neighbor in need. God is love, and love drives out fear. Now, when these things begin to take place, Stand up and raise your heads because your redemption is drawing near. What Jesus is telling us to do is just the opposite of what you do when you're afraid, right? Stand up, raise your head, become bigger, spread your arms out in love to embrace the stranger, the one who could use a smile, the one Jesus died for. Jesus told us that we can move mountains, that we can change the world by acting with love for our neighbor. Instead of dissipating our energy, we can laser focus our energy. Do you know that most people on the street 
are never looked in the eye or greeted with a smile. Never. That simple action alone is worth everything. And it really doesn't take much energy. We're walking by anyway. On the earth, distress among nations, confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves, people will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Now, we all know how this ends, right? When we see these signs, we know that our redemption is near. We can rejoice as we participate in the coming of the kingdom of God. The thing is, we get to choose. Yeah, we do. We get to choose. We can choose to participate in participate in the inbreaking of the kingdom of God by casting off our fears and with all that we have and all that we are stand up and raise our heads and our voices and our hands to be a witness to Christ's very presence in the world in our baptism Christ was born in each one of us yes isn't that amazing the God of the universe was born in us. As we claim that we belong to Christ and begin to take on the likeness of the one who indeed lives in us, the kingdom of God will come into focus. Jesus came to show us that we can, in all circumstances, respond with love, and in so doing, we will see the kingdom come. Let us pray. Gracious God, open our ears this season to hear you calling us to be generous. Open our eyes to see your presence all around us in ways that will surprise us. Open our hearts to love those you send to us knowing that you come to us in ways we may not recognize. Most of all, this Advent season, help us to be courageous, acting always with love as we await your coming. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. <laughs>